Jets, and I continue to be r ridiculously bullish on this, guys. Let's wait and see what happens right here. Don't believe it until it actually happens. To be aware that there are certain things that are slowing down. And sure, it's taken a long time, right? Longer than even I expected for the economy to start to slow. But the economy is slowing. And that's bringing us into this Federal Reserve announcement tomorrow at 2 p.m. We're, they're not going to cut rates tomorrow, but I'm curious what is the commentary from the Federal Reserve? What does Jerome Powell say in his press conference to give us insight into how many times the Fed may cut this year? Wait a minute, everyone. Get ready for the ultimate crypto investing website, the Bitcoin seller. It's your golden ticket to an exclusive insider's club. Expert predictions, on-chain data, and breaking news, all for you. Imagine all crypto insights landing in your inbox daily, like having your own expert team. Don't miss this VIP opportunity. Click the link and secure your spot. Join now and ride the crypto roller coaster with the Bitcoin seller. Garrett Soloway says that he is very optimistic about Bitcoin and that he expects it to go higher. He is waiting for a confirmation of a breakout, which is a sudden and significant increase in price that he sees on the chart. He does not trust the breakout until it actually happens and he is aware of some factors that are slowing down the market. Garrett sees that the economy is slowing down, which is taking longer than he expected. The Fed is not going to lower the interest rates tomorrow, but he is curious about what the Fed will say about its plans. Gareth wants to hear from Jerome Powell, who is the chair of the Fed, about how many times the Fed may lower the interest rates this year. Let's join Gareth in a conversation about these topics and more. We're just watching this chart of Bitcoin, which I talked about yesterday. Bitcoin closed a fraction above this trend line. I'm watching today to see if it confirms. Remember the range I gave, 43 to 44,000 is your range here. So you closed above. We have not confirmed, though. We need to see a daily close basically north of 43,500. We get that daily close, that would be a positive for Bitcoin to reestablish itself potentially above this level. As of now, it's showing signs that maybe it can, but what I've learned when it comes to confirmation is don't believe it until it actually happens. Too many rug pulls out there. I've seen it a million times. Let's wait and see what happens right here. All right couple other charts that I want to go over. We got to look at gold. Gold continues to inch up here in the charts, and I continue to be r ridiculously bullish on this, guys. Whether I'm holding I'm holding gold miners, GDX, I'm holding GLD, I bought gold, the physical, I mean, you name it. I continue to just continue to accumulate this position here. Sure enough, we are upticking for our second day. We haven't gotten back to these levels yet, but this area right here is what I'm watching, right? I need to see a close above it. So we need to see a close basically above 2075, and then I need to see a confirming move one of the next few days. And again, confirming moves basically means that you go higher. You close higher than that first candle high without trading back below the line. And essentially, that will give us a confirming move. Here, you had a close above right here, but you never confirmed, and you went right down below. Here, you pierced it. Obviously, didn't even close above, so that doesn't count either. We have to watch for that. That is one of the key metrics that I use is the confirmation signal. Taking a look at silver real quick. Silver also upticking a little bit today, but it's still in this channel, right? I mean, you still have resistance up here. There's still lots of resistance up here. Bear with me until I get that. So again, resistance in this upper range here and support down here. And really at this stage of the game, it's waiting to see which angle is broken. You have resistance at 25, support at around 21.75. So one of these has to break, then you get a bigger move in that direction. I continue to favor the upside, even though I still think the pure play of gold is really the play to be in. Gareth is watching the price of Bitcoin to see if it can break above a trend line and confirm a bullish signal. The price needs to close above 43500 to do that. Gareth warns that confirmation is important and not to trust the price until it happens. There are too many rug pulls, which are sudden drops in price that trap buyers. He is very bullish on gold and has been accumulating various gold-related assets, such as gold miners, GDX, gold ETFs, GLD, and physical gold. Gareth says gold is rising for the second day, and he is looking for a close above 2075 to confirm a bullish move. He explains that confirmation means closing higher than the previous high without falling below the previous low. This is a key metric Gareth uses. Gareth says silver is also rising slightly but it is still in a channel.
which is a range between support and resistance levels. The price needs to break out of the channel to a bigger move. Gareth prefers the upside, but he thinks gold is a better play. Couple headlines coming through. We have Whirlpool falling 5% after beating on earnings and revenue. However, this is why it's down. They basically said that the guidance was going to be lower going forward. What they're seeing is that consumers are not upgrading from appliance to appliance, meaning that consumer spending is starting to slow. So this one piqued my interest because, again, we're talking about we're not talking about something small, right? It seems like the consumers are more than willing to buy something that's small that doesn't cost a lot. That part of the consumer spending is still here. But when we talk about Whirlpool, what are we talking about? Refrigerators, freezers, hot tubs, you name it. All of these type of things, these bigger purchases, these thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollar purchases, they are seeing a major slowdown there. So that is something that we have to, as investors, pay attention to. The stock today, at last I checked, down about five percent on the morning. UPS, UPS falling over five percent after missing revenue and giving weak guidance. Now again, we could look at this in the same manner: Is this a consumer that is not shipping as many things? Or, in other words, are they not buying as many things that are being shipped to them via UPS? Another potential warning sign for us as investors. So, again, the point is this, is that we have to be aware that there are certain things that are slowing down. And, sure, it's taken a long time, right? Longer than even I expected for the economy to start to slow. But the economy is slowing. And that's bringing us into this Federal Reserve announcement tomorrow at 2 p.m., we're, they're not going to cut rates tomorrow, but I'm curious, what is the commentary from the Federal Reserve? What does Jerome Powell say in his press conference to give us insight into how many times the Fed may cut this year? All right. As we continue down, there were some companies that jumped on earnings here. SMCI jumping 10 percent more. And again, I say more because they pre-announced two weeks ago. So the company came out two weeks ago and said, guys, we're going to have way better numbers than we expected. By the way, this is AI. This is chips, that same group. And the stock went up 60 percent from that point to yesterday into the close. So 60 percent move up. I'll show you that chart in just a minute. Then yesterday they actually reported. So they pre-reported. They told us kind of how their earnings were going to be. Yesterday was their official report day where they gave guidance and they raised their guidance, and the stock ripped up again. Right now, currently trading up about 10% in the pre-market session. So again, we're going to look at that chart because it is getting way overdone. All metrics across the board are overdone. But then again, what chip stock is not overdone? AMD's overdone. NVIDIA is overdone. They're all overdone, but they continue to grind higher, at least for the time being. Now remember, the SMH, that is my key. That's my ticket here. The SMH with the measured move and the topping tail, watch that factor. That is more important than any one semiconductor. That is the signal of the entire sector. We'll look at that as well. Okay, lastly, GM and FFIV here. So GM beat on earnings and revenue. I think the bar was relatively low for GM, especially after Tesla's earnings came out and everything like that. So again, they did end up beating on earnings and revenue. They reiterated guidance, which is a big positive. They even said their EV area within the company will be profitable by the second half of 2024, which is a positive. The stock is jumping, last I checked, about 7.5%. So nice little move there. FFIV jumping 9% on the back of all, uh, solid earnings and guidance. That, again, is not a huge company, but nonetheless, it is making a beautiful move of 9% pre pre-market. And lastly, again, guys, earnings after the bell, the big names are going to be AMD, um, Google, and Microsoft. Major trillion-dollar companies reporting after the bell. AMD is not a trillion-dollar name, but it will be a huge influencer for the overall um, markets for semiconductor. Garrett says that these two companies are down in the stock market, even though Whirlpool beat earnings and revenue expectations. This is because they have lower guidance for the future which means they expect lower profits or sales. This also indicates that consumers are spending less on big items like appliances and shipping. Garrett sees that the economy is slowing down and that investors are looking forward to the Federal Reserve announcement tomorrow. The Federal Reserve is the central bank of the U.S. that sets the interest rates and the monetary policy. The Fed is not likely to lower the interest rates, but he is curious about what the Fed chair, Jerome Powell, 
will say about the possibility of future rate cuts. SNCI and GM, those two companies are up in the stock market because they had strong earnings and revenue results. SMCI is a company that makes servers and storage systems, and GM is a company that makes cars and trucks. SMCI had better than expected results and GM said that their electric vehicle division will be profitable by the second half of 2024. FIV, a company that provides software and services for network security and performance, surged 9% on strong earnings and guidance. AMD, Google, and Microsoft are some of the notable companies that will report their earnings after the market closes today. Garrett says that these companies will influence the broader market, especially the semiconductor sector, which is the industry that makes chips for computers and other devices, today.